Original black magic pocket cinema camera. We know it, we love it and there are tons of videos about why this camera is unique. The best settings are also tested and well established. You get the widest dynamic range at 800 ISO. At 400 you sacrifice a little bit of highlights, but the image will have less noise. And for the maximum amount of captured data you are of course supposed to shoot RAW. It is the whole point of this camera, isn't it? But RAW is heavy. And it is very demanding about sustainable speeds of an SD card. On this camera RAW bitrate is 60 megabytes per second or 480 megabits, which is not insignificant even by today's standards. An hour of recording will take 216 gigabytes. The next best option is to shoot ProRes 42 HQ. It is still beautiful, but less flexible, and it takes twice less space. But knowing all of that, what if I decide to choose the worst possible options? For example, if you forgot your fast SD card, or it's almost full, but you need to capture some more footage, can you really use ProRes Proxy for that? In this mode bitrate is less than 6 megabytes per second, or around 45 megabits per second, which is still something. It is more than, for example, what Canon's C100 and even C200 records in Full HD. And you need just 20 gigabytes for an hour of recording. In RAW it would be barely enough for 6 minutes. Also, for a good measure, let's limit our ISO to 200. Theoretically it would give us the smallest dynamic range, with more space preserved for shadows and not highlights. Oh, and one more thing. Let's also switch the recording profile from film to video, which is definitely sacrilegious. It would cut dynamic range even more and will basically bake in Rec. 709 LUT, giving us even less opportunities to recover in post. But on the other hand it will eliminate the need for color grading. So would the settings cut off all the magic and make the footage looks like it came from an old camcorder? Let's find out. Before going anywhere I made a quick test in my apartment and it looked promising. There is a problem that wasn't noticeable on the small screen and probably not very obvious after YouTube compression and we will come back to that later. The reduced highlight range was very noticeable. Even if I was shooting not shiny objects like rough rocks or a tree stump, you can see a lot of hot spots on the leaves in the background and on the objects themselves. And even if you measured perfectly to avoid overexposure, still everything is moving. Clouds, leaves, sun, your subject and yourself. So something will catch more light than needed and you have no leeway to pull highlights back. But with that said, I was impressed how good overall image looks. It still has that specific feel that we love this camera for. It is smooth and colors are nice and I would believe if you said that this is a shot from a movie or a TV show. You even can grade it a bit, it's not falling apart immediately. But as I said, there is a problem. A big one. 6 megabytes is just not enough data to hold all the information. In ProRes that is. It would probably be fine in MP4, if this camera could shoot MP4. And the more small and moving objects there are, the more noticeable it becomes. It is not immediately visible and I will need to zoom in a lot and increase contrast to demonstrate, but there is that strange shimmering. It doesn't look like usual compression artifacts, so parts of the image are not moving around in chunks and blocks, which is good, it makes it less noticeable. But it is clearly there and you can't fix it in post. It isn't a noise or a color shift, it's just a lack of data. And yes, this phenomenon is there in the first test shot. If you look closely at the leaves, you see the lack of details and that squarish shimmer. You can work around it and try to avoid complicated scenes or just ignore it, but what is even better, you can choose to shoot in ProRes LT instead of Proxy. It is just one step above and still gives you plenty of time to record and doesn't torture your SD card. But it has enough of bandwidth, so there are no dancing squares anymore. It wouldn't be my preferred method to record with this camera, but at least now I know the limits. So I don't know will this information be useful to anyone in 2024 and beyond, when big and fast cards are relatively affordable, especially compared to 2013 when this camera was released. But still I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.